So simplifying trigonometric expressions can be difficult. But in this video, what I want to cover is four tips that you can use to help you simplify any trigonometric expression. They're not exclusive, but these are four tips that I use myself when I have to simplify trigonometric expression, as well as tell my students to use when they get stuck. So I hope you can take these four tips and apply them to the next time you need to simplify a trigonometric expression using your trigonometric identities. Now, the first tip you absolutely need to know when simplifying trigonometric expressions is going to be this. Is to look for the division property. Now, most of you kind of remember, like if you have a number divided by itself, well, that equals one, right? And the same thing works if you have variables like X divided by X equals one. Well, guess what? This also works for our trigonometric expressions. If I have the cosine of theta divided by the cosine of theta, that is also going to equal one. But the problem when we start to simplify our trigonometric expressions is students don't understand or don't know when to look for and when to use our trigonometric expressions. So let's go and take a look at an example of when and how we can look for the division property. So for example, if I had the problem, you can see nothing is being divided out in the numerator and the denominator here, right? There's no division property. So if I want to look for or create the division property, one thing I can do is I can rewrite tangent as a sine of theta over a cosine of theta. Now you can see that I have a cosine of theta in the numerator and a cosine of theta in the denominator. So therefore, these are now going to divide out into a sine of theta. Now, a mistake that students will make sometimes is they, instead of rewriting tangent as a sine over cosine, they'll maybe go ahead and rewrite it as a one over a cotangent of theta. Well, you can see here that does not help us with the division property. Property. When you're looking for the division property, you want to look for the same term in the numerator as well as in the denominator that is going to divide out. It's also important sometimes to not always oversimplify the problem. So that's the main thing when you're simplifying these expressions, especially when you're dealing with a rational expression, look to apply the division property. Look to simplify or rewrite your terms so therefore you can have the same term in the numerator and denominator that you can divide out. And remember, the division property can be applied across multiplication, but not addition and subtraction. Tip number two is is you have to know your identities. I'm talking about the Pythagorean identities, the cofunction identities, the even odd identities, the reciprocal identities, and the quotient identities. Yes, with practice, these will become easier, but it's so important to keep practicing these and know them off the top of your head because as you're simplifying expressions or verifying identities, which comes next, you're gonna have to rely on knowing these identities. These are what's gonna help make simplifying your trigonometric expressions easy to understand. And yes, I know there's many, many more identities that we could also include on here. But to keep this video simple, I'm just going to focus on these basic identities that you have to make sure you know. All right, so let's go and take a look at an example that can look very, very confusing unless you know your identities. All right, so there's a couple ways that students get confused here. Whenever we see a pi halves minus theta, that's confusing. Then cosine of negative theta, a lot of students forget that. And then also the squared here, students a lot of times kind of forget like what exactly that means. So what I wanna do is just kind of rewrite this expression in a couple different ways so we can see the identities clearly and then apply them. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite this cosine squared actually as the function squared. So whenever you have cosine theta of pi halves minus theta, we can rewrite this as a one minus cosine of pi halves minus theta quantity squared. And then I'm just gonna rewrite the denominator as the same. Now, the reason why this is important because I want you to understand we write a trigonometric function squared. We just like to put the squared here because we don't want to confuse it with making the argument squared. The reason why this is important to look at this view though now is because you can see that the cosine of pi halves minus theta, while that can be confusing sometimes because it looks like a lot's going on, that's actually just our cofunction identity that you're gonna need to know. So the cosine of pi halves minus theta is equal to a sine of theta. And then also we see the cosine of negative theta. Well, that is also another identity. That is your even odd identity. So the cosine of negative theta is just equal to the cosine of theta. So what's nice about having these identities is now I can just rewrite these as another simplified form. So I can rewrite this as a one minus a sine squared of theta divided by a cosine of theta. But we're not done yet. If we need to simplify these, we wanna keep on using as many identities as we possibly can. And the one thing I notice is whenever you have a squared, always a lot to look to your Pythagorean identities. Remember one of the famous Pythagorean identities here is a sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to one. Now, if I wanna get a one minus sine squared of theta out of this expression, all I simply need to do is subtract a sine squared of theta on both sides. Now, what that's gonna give me is a cosine squared of theta equals one minus sine squared of theta. So what's important about this is now we can take this whole expression and I can replace a one minus sine squared of theta with just a cosine squared of theta 
divided by a cosine of theta. Now, remember the last tip when I talked about the division property? We gotta be very careful. We gotta remember that the cosine squared of theta just represents the cosine of theta times the cosine of theta. So we have the cosine of theta times cosine of theta divided by a cosine of theta. So again, now applying the division property, we can see that we're gonna have a final answer. All of this stuff simply just equals the cosine of theta. Now tip number three is a little controversial. I like to give it to students when they start to struggle with simplifying our expressions because it's giving them some tools that they're used to. However, I get, I am very hesitant to introduce this to the whole class because some students will always use this as a crutch and that's not the point that I want you to use this for. It is a great tool to sometimes when you get stuck or to help you get through something that's a little bit messy algebraically. However, for time's sake, as well as for understanding, we're not gonna wanna do this on every single problem, but it can be very useful to understand. And this tip is simply, rather than using our trigonometric expressions, which sometimes can kind of feel like a lot of words to write on a piece of paper, just replace them with X's and Y's. Now you don't really need to replace with X and Y's. You could use A's and B's or elemental P's. It doesn't really matter. Typically, I like to use sometimes the X and Y's because those do relate to like sines and cosines. So sometimes it makes a little sense. And then also algebraically, we're a little bit more used to using X's and Y's to simplify expressions. And a lot of what we're doing with simplifying trigonometric expressions is related to what we did previously with our algebraic concepts. We're applying the same rules, the techniques. It's just now we have some different functions or variables that we're using to apply them. So for example, when you look at a problem that looks like this, some students will say, I have absolutely no idea how to do that problem. And I'd be like, yes, you do. We just did this last quarter. And they'd be like, no, I don't know how to do that. The cosine of theta confuses me and I don't like fractions. And I say, great. Well, why don't we forget about the cosine of theta and let's just use X. Now, this looks like something that we did in our unit on rational functions. And again, you could still have problems with how to do this, but at least hopefully it's something that you are familiar with and a little bit easier to work algebraically. So what I would recommend is when you do get stuck or you're having a hard time can really kind of understanding how the problem is set up and what to exactly do, what process to look for, rewriting them in terms of variables sometimes can help unlock your brain on what exactly you need to do. And in this case, we need to get a common denominator to add these because these two fractions do not have a common denominator. So to do that, I'm gonna find the common denominator, which is a X plus one times a X minus one. And then now I have a common denominator. I can just go ahead and recombine my two numerators. So you can see, even if we're dealing with cosines, it's gonna be the exact same process, right? We don't have common denominators, but if I multiply by the conjugate in this case, I can obtain my common denominator. So that's exactly what I'm going to do in this problem. Now I have a common denominator, I can just rewrite this as one single fraction and simplify. Now we could keep on using our trigonometric identities to simplify this to a negative sine squared of theta, but it's not gonna simplify this any further. The main idea that I wanted to talk with you about this is a lot of students will get stuck. They won't know what to do next. But again, if you can visualize this or work with the math in terms of variables, and then just kind of go back to using substitution with your trigonometric functions, you can kind of see how simplifying doesn't have to be so complicated. The last tip is to use sines and cosines. Now this is very related to this last tip using X's and Y's because a lot of times students will relate cosine with X and sine with Y. And you can therefore rewrite tangent as a Y over an X. You can rewrite a cosecant as a one over a Y. But as I mentioned, I don't prefer always using that method because one, it can take a little bit more extra time. And then two, not always are we going to be want to rewrite them in terms of variables. We can do a lot of this work just by understanding everything in terms of of sines and cosines. So for example, when I have a problem that looks something like this, a lot of students would have no idea what to do. Like, how do you add a tangent of theta plus a cotangent of theta? In my mind, that's like trying to add an X and a Y. You just can't do it. They're not like terms. However, if you say, well, why don't we write things in terms of sines and cosines? Tangent can be written as a sine of theta over a cosine of theta, and cotangent of theta can be written as a cosine of theta over a sine of theta. Now, don't apply the division property, right? Because they are separated by addition, not multiplication. So what we're gonna need to do is just like the last example, we need to find our common denominators. Now, again, if you have trouble with this, you could now rewrite them in terms of X's and Y's. But hopefully with a little bit of experience, you can just see that the common denominator is gonna be a sine of theta times cosine of theta. So all I'm gonna need to do is multiply the right-hand side by cosine of theta over cosine of theta and the left-hand side by sine of theta over sine of theta. And now I can just go ahead and simplify over my common denominator. 
And now, if you want to go back to tip number two, know your identities, sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to a one. And then if we want to apply identities one more time, we could also use our reciprocal identities to go ahead and rewrite this not as a fraction. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, that is your four tips that you can use to simplify your trigonometric expressions. I hope this video was helpful for you. And if you want more examples of me simplifying expressions, go ahead and check down the examples down below or go ahead and check my next video I have for you here. Cheers.